I'm going to take another question from Natalie. Natalie Kilton. Is it right that three and a half years on from the Grenfell Tower tragedy, that the government still does not know how many buildings have dangerous cladding, let alone a plan to actually fix them? Now, Natalie, I'm right, am I, that you're in a building with dangerous cladding? How, what's your situation? How's that affected you? Yeah, so unfortunately, I am one of the affected people. Um, I bought my place six years ago and we got all the correct checks done. And about two years ago, we found out that we have dangerous cladding and it's left me in a position that I'm now trapped in my home and it's unsafe. It's a, a scary place to live. And it means that at the moment I'm trapped here, I can't sell, I can't move. And yeah, it's, it's not a nice position to be in. And what effect is that having on you, A, in terms of your life and your life choices, and also what's the value of your, your flat now? So for me, that's probably the hardest thing is that I, I saved up, I'd done the right thing and got onto the property ladder young and put my life savings in. And now a property is currently worth zero pounds. Um, and until the cladding's fixed, it will be worth zero pounds. And I face a huge bill potentially to fix that issue. And it's not an issue that I caused. It's not an issue that anyone could have seen, but it's an issue that me as a leaseholder I'm being expected to put the bill for. Thank you. I mean, my heart goes out to Natalie. I just think it's extraordinary. And I think when I've been talking to people a lot in the last week, as I, I led a debate in Parliament on this on Monday, I, I heard from people who are finding it so difficult to believe that there's anyone left in Natalie's position when three and a half years ago there was such a terrible tragedy in which 72 people lost their lives. And yet it is so. So Natalie's question was, is it right that the government doesn't know how many buildings have got dangerous cladding on? It's also not just dangerous cladding, there are other fire risks as well. And it's not just that there are still buildings, still buildings with the same cladding as was on Grenfell, the exact same, but there are other buildings with other dangerous cladding on. I've met people like Natalie across the country. It's absolutely heartbreaking. And so, yes, it may be correct that the government doesn't know how many buildings there are, but it's not right it's morally wrong, and it's morally wrong that Natalie and people like her have been left with the fear, with the cost, the cost of trying to remedy it, and the, the fact that her flat is now valueless. So, so what many people in the same situation. Well, on Monday, we called on the government, and I think it's something which has cross-party support. This is above party politics. We called on the government, and we know that there are Tory MPs and Liberal Democrat MPs who all feel the same way, to lift the burden off the residents like Natalie, who's, as she said, she's done the right thing. She's saved up and bought her first home to get on the property ladder. We think that the government should lift that burden off leaseholders, get sorted, finding out exactly how many buildings and what level of risk. Not some arbitrary height, but what's the level of risk? Remedy it, get it remedied as soon as possible, and then go after the industry that caused the problem to pay for it. Because actually, why should the taxpayer pay for it as well? It's really important that leaseholders and residents like Natalie have that fear and that financial worry lifted from their shoulders now. And I know that, you know, Oliver's probably going to tell you that there's the Building Safety Fund, and there is, but well, it we'll hasn't got Oliver out the talk door. About what he wants to talk about. It hasn't got out the door. It isn't reaching people like Natalie, and I've met so many Natalies who are facing bankruptcy because it's not been taken from them. Wilfred. Well, I tell you what's quite interesting, is that when we talk about the government, I think what people don't understand, it's about we, the public, will have to pay no, I just said to get this problem fixed. Now... It's not that it's wrong to pay to get the problem fixed, but I have a real prejudice against insurance companies. They will always find a way how not to sort of take responsibility. And I think what we need to do is to get all these different industries, whether it's in insurance companies, the builders, the property developers, and say, right, something has gone wrong. Rather than spend years trying to find out actually who is to blame, it is morally wrong that these people are left in limbo. We need to do something and fix it. And I don't think it's just down to the government to fix it. I think all of these industries should contribute because some way they would have been involved. It's no good saying, well, you know, we did this according to law of the t at the time. That may be the case. Things change. So I'd like everybody to actually become fair about it. And I don't think it should always be left at the government to sort it out. Also, those industries who made millions out of it, they should also be thinking that they should help to fix this problem. Dale. Um, yeah, I, I agree. It should be um, a cross-party thing. Um, and it's, it's 
unacceptable that it's taken three and a half years to, to not even get anywhere. And where are these businesses that put the cladding on that, that, that obviously knew that there was a problem? That, that's another question and that's another thing that needs to be, needs to be solved because that, it, it's unacceptable that, that people like, like Natalie is in a, in a property for three and a half years that, that she's lost out and, and that's her future, that's everything gone. I mean, a number of the businesses are saying they were, they were complying with the building regs of the time. Uh, Beatrice? I'd just like to say I think it's ridiculous that we're actually living in a country where we have to reaffirm that this should be a non-political issue. This is people living in houses that, you know, they are practically death traps. And it's just awful to hear that so many people go to bed knowing that they could end up in the same position of people in Grenfell. Steph? Hi, yeah, I mean, a very similar point. I just think it's appalling that these people are having to sleep in houses. The government should dig deep. They need to pay to get these people out of these situations so that they can move on with their lives. And then we have to take it up with the companies that put them in this position in the first place. But I do think the government do have to pay initially to get them out of this situation because it's terrifying how would they you know i don't think there's anyone in this panel who would actually or want to live in one of those flats it must be very frightening and these poor families and of course part of the difficulty on it isn't it is, is it's uh, some of the companies saying well look, we were just when we were building these things we, we believed we were complying with building regulations of the time you hear a lot there's a lot of lot of people clearly very exercised about this yeah, and, look, I, and not surprisingly, in Natalie's position. Yes, no, by the way, I actually um, I agree with uh, an awful lot of what Thangham has said. I think this should be above party politics. I mean, Natalie, in your case, it is absolutely uh, dreadful the situation that you find yourself in. As you rightly say, you've done the right thing, you've saved up, you've bought somewhere as a leaseholder through no fault of your own. You now find yourself in a position where you, you can't, you're stuck in this house. I mean, I, I think it is worth just picking on a couple of things about the, the safety point. So the most dangerous form of cladding, the so-called ACM, which is what was used in the Grenfell Towers, 100% uh, of that uh, has been removed from social housing or is about to be removed by the end of this year, 95% uh, for, um, in, in relation to the private sector. There is a problem more broadly with all these other forms of cladding, and Thangham is absolutely right to highlight that we need to go through this process of identifying the, rem the remainder of these different forms of cladding. And because uh, it's not just social housing, it's private yes, housing. Yes, exactly. Well. And I understand that will be done by the, the end of the year. In terms of the support, uh, as Thangham uh, referenced, a uh, billion pounds has been provided, but it is clear that we need to provide more support. Um, I've, I've been discussing this uh, with my colleagues, and I know that the um, the, the Secretary of State for uh, Communities and Local Government is engaging intensively with the Chancellor and that they are working to find a solution to provide further support for those people. And of it, course, when you say as, further support, does that mean more money? Well, of course, we need to explore providing that, that, that further support. And then, in addition to that, of course, you have to apply the pressure both to the mortgage companies, to the insurance companies, and, of course, to the industry, because it must be on the basis that polluter pays. I mean, if you, if you, are, if you have this... Uh, dangerous cladding, you have the people who but, put but it up need to make a But you're, you're virtually it. quoting from my speech in the debate on Monday, uh, which you did not vote for. You've had opportunity after opportunity to put this right. It's three and a half years on. There's amendments, cross-party supported amendments down on the fire safety bill, which the government isn't acknowledging. There was our debate on Monday, which I said exactly what you're quoting, in fact. It is, it is just unbelievable that you're not seeing that these people have waited too long too long for justice. It is utterly unjust. It's utterly unfair. There are models around the world. There's the government of Victoria in Australia that's taken a similar principle to the one that we're suggesting, which is you set up an independent task force with powers to enforce, to remediate and to fund the works up front and then to go after the building industry in whatever way necessary. There's a range of ways. It may be difficult, but you've had three and a half years and Natalie still living in a dangerous flat. I, mean, I don't understand how you can justify it. Vanda. Well, I think this is just emblematic of a far bigger problem, and that is the fact that profit is put above people, and it's that simple. And we learnt that at those tragic events in Grenfell. And, you know, people think health and safety isn't very sexy, but you know what? There's a reason for health and safety. There's a reason for that. And the cuts to the health and, sec health and safety executive, all of these cuts 
all of these shortcuts, all of these tenders, all of these opportunities for businesses to come in with the lowest possible tender to be taken up. This isn't just about business. This is about people like Natalie. This is about all of those sleepless nights. And when we look at the industry, you know, I'm sure you'll remember a couple of years ago, the head of Persimmon was getting a £75 million bonus. Now, they wanted to give him £110 million, but they thought people might think that was a bit much. So they only gave him £75 million. That was a bonus for doing a good job. Now, the industry is full of these people. It's full of CEOs on three, four, five million pounds. They're not worried about cladding on their buildings. You know, the problem is, as, as, as has been said, three and a half years. And now we're talking about another couple of months and another year and the end of the year. Well, I'm sure that's, uh, you know, that's not a comfort to people like Natalie and all of those thousands and millions of people potentially who are living in these houses that are unsafe. It's a very basic human right to go to sleep at night in a house that you think is safe. Robin? I mean, you know, I, I'm hearing all, all the discussion and I think one of the things that, that's kind of really clear right now is governments can act quickly when they need to. And the example is, is the vaccine race that we've seen. And I can't provide the solution, but there should be a will to act as if your loved one, whether it's your daughter, your parent, your brother, your sister, is living in one of those buildings. And that should be the moral imperative to move at speed. Natalie, I, I saw you wanted to come back in. Yeah, so for me, I think I agree with a lot of what's been said around it can't just be the government that pays and, you know, we have to go to the lots of people who actually were responsible for causing this issue. But for me as a leaseholder, I've got no way of doing that. There's no possible way that I can go after these people. So I am reliant on the government to do this for me and to protect me. And are you encouraged and by what Oliver's had to say? What was that, sorry? Are you encouraged by what Oliver's had to say? No, not at all. It's, it's three and a half years on and not a lot's happened. And he mentions about the, the funding that's available. It's first come, first serve. So as soon as that funding runs out, people will not get their buildings fixed. So it's no comfort to me when I have to go to bed at night knowing that if there was a fire in my building, that my life could be put at risk. Is there anything you want to say to Natalie before I move but on? I, I, as, I, as I said when we first uh, discussed this, I completely understand your frustration at the, the pace of, of doing this. We have, But, no, but you, rather than saying what you've already yeah, said, because that's not comfort yeah, territory, is well, there anything you can say to Natalie tonight, yeah. either in terms of what money the government's going to give or, or, or an action yeah. the government is going to well, take that might make her sleep easier in her bed tonight? Na Natalie talked about that, the billion pound fund which we've made available. Of course, uh, we are working with the Chancellor to see what further support we can provide uh, it, the, the principles are clear that, um, that somebody like Natalie should not be in the position that, okay. uh, she, through no fault of her own, she's, she's stuck in, in this property. Uh, we have made progress with the ACM, uh, a lot of progress. We need to do, make more progress with okay. the other forms of cladding, and we are looking at further solutions to help that. There's plenty of solutions on the table, Oliver, and you just need to back one. <laughs>